Father, we're just so grateful, Lord, that the pleasures we have in this grace, Lord, is just to receive the abundance of goodness that you have for us, Lord, that you've stored up each day. So that the day that we have in store, Lord God, that you've got abundant favor flowing to the every area that we need it, Lord. So, Father, it's a privilege and an honor to see more, to see your goodness towards us, Lord. Thank you. To see your, um, your faithfulness coming through, Lord. And that as, as, we, as that happens, Dad, we become more conscious of the new covenant that we are in. And in that we are, we become more rested. The rest that's um, been won for us arises in us. Why? Because we know that you care for us in all things. So, Lord, we're just so grateful. Um, I give you all the honor and all praise. And we all say, Amen. 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 Good morning, brothers and sisters. So, uh, one of the beautiful things that Joey said today was that we stand under an open heaven. That's, that's a thought that sometimes, if you just ponder on that alone, it's enough to just to give, you feel the faith just rise in you. You think you ponder on the goodness of God and, and you see his, that covenant that you've been put into. We, we have become recipients of this new covenant, a covenant that we did not cut, a covenant that we had nothing to do with. But the Lord put us in a place of high favor, and in that place we're expecting of good things. We're not expecting of good things because I've done something good. We're expecting of good things because Father is good. And this covenant that we are in, it's actually a declaration of his goodness towards us. And, and it declares that he is first the source of all grace. He is also the dispenser of all grace. And he's also the knower of all grace in the sense that he knows every area that you need the grace for. And he's not stingy that he withholds it from you. He actually wants to give it liberally for whatever area of your life that you need this grace for. Amen. So we, we go through things, right? You know, we, we are set apart children, but we still live in this world. So regardless, we're still part of the society. We're still part of the system. We're still part of the going-ons of the world. And even in that, it can drag you in. It can make you feel like you're being enclosed around by the bulls of Bashan coming around you. You know, you feel like there's no way out. But like I said, the beautiful thing is we have an open heaven. Brothers and sisters, that is, the, that is what David was looking forward to. That is what Moses was looking forward to. That is what Solomon was looking forward to. We stand in that area of divine favor all the time. Why? Because of what Jesus has done. That is the foundation of our rest because we, we're looking to the cross and we see what Jesus has done. And by faith, we know. Um, Hebrews 4 said it was by faith that they did not attain the rest that God had for them. Why? Because they didn't mix what was said to them by faith. Amen. So we understand now that once we gave our lives by faith, we came into the promises of grace. We came into this new covenant and we're stuck there, whether you like it or not. Some people will say, we are denounced Christ. Sorry, can't. <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of this. It's done by Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So like I said, we go through things. Things happen in this world. You know, but 1 Peter 5 says that... Oh, sorry, it's not coming up. 1 Peter 5, 9, uh, 10 says that after you suffer a little while, one of my, one of my favorite verses with Tui, because we've seen um, the, the enemy come against us. We've seen the enemy come against us in ministry and stuff like this. But we know that we are not subject to the enemy. We are subject to God of all grace. Amen. So after you suffer a little while, it's not the, the will of God that we suffer. It, it, we have a father who loves us so much. And he's not in the business of slapping your sickness. He's not in the business of giving you cancer in order to teach you lessons. Gone are those days when, when the preachings were like that. Now we understand the new covenant grace. And when you rightly divide the word, you see that our father is not a father of installing sickness. In fact, he put it on his own son so that we can't and will never have that. We're still subject to we are in the world, but that's not the truth of who we are, amen? That's not the truth of who dad is. So after you may have suffered a little while, it says that the God of all grace, who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own glory in Christ, brothers and sisters, 
That's where our glory is found. That's where all the goodness and the grace of God is found. When you know that you're in Christ. Our positions in Christ far outweigh what the world says about you. Our position in Christ far outweighs what you think about you. Brothers and sisters, our positions in Christ is the whole reason why the spiritual blessings are imparted to us. It's the whole reason why we can feel and know in our hearts that he himself will complete and confirm and establish you in every area, making you what you ought to be. It's not our job to make us what we ought to be. We're, we know that self-effort will not get us anywhere now in grace. So the place where we look to for the sufficiency of the, the grace that, or, or the supply that we need, we look to Christ, the source. So what it says here is that the God of all grace, that, that does not only speak about the source, that God is God of all grace, but it also denotes that it can affect any area that you think that you don't need or that you think that, you, that God's grace cannot come into. Remember, he, he came from the uttermost to reach the guttermost. Your sin is not powerful to stop the grace of God flowing into your area. Being conscious of that, because that's, that's what the covenant of, of grace is telling us. I will remember your sins no more. Amen? So we believe that. We take that on board. But what I'm trying to say is that no matter what you're going through, our consciousness is always on the God of all grace. Not the God of all judgment, the God of all grace. Not the God of all telling you off because you just had an argument with your wife out there, which we went and talked about in front. But the God of all grace. That's the proof. I wake up at night sometimes and I think to myself, man, praise God that we, the God of this universe, of everything, is a God whose character is full of grace. Imagine if it was full of you got to please me. Man, dictatorship. All of these kind of things you, you, you're scared to approach. You, you don't want anything to do with a God like that, actually. And that's what we were, felt like because we got taught that you needed to please God. You needed to raise to a certain level or a standard to attain righteousness from God. But praise God, that has been attained through Jesus Christ. So no matter what we go through, brothers and sisters, we're always conscious that God is the God of all grace. And he's the one that's imparting spiritual blessings to you continuously. And the book of Galatians says that the miracles are work continuously from the continuously hearing of grace. So it's always flowing to us. But sometimes our worry can, can kind of, you know, what Prince said, can kind of choke the favor. So to speak. It's always flowing, but your worry can choke the flavor, uh, flavor, flavor from coming in. Amen? So he makes you complete. He makes you, he confirms you. He strengthens you. That's what the Spirit does to you. It confirms you that you are righteous. It declares that you are complete in Christ. It strengthens you when you feel like the enemy is attacking. And that's, in context, that's what this verse is all about. Verse 9 says that the enemy goes around like a warring lion, seeking to whom he devours. And then it goes on to that. The suffering, therefore, comes from the roaring lion. So after the, the enemy goes around like a roaring lion, and after you have suffered a little while from that roaring lion, but that's not God, okay? The God of all grace will pardon blessings and establish you, making what you ought to be. So our joy is seeing God with us in every um, circumstance, in every situation we go through. That's what the book of Corinthians talks about, that, that we have that joy. Amen? It's, it's, it's our joy to see God walking with us through the valleys, guiding us with his staff, um, protecting us with his rod. You know, that's the joy we have in grace. Amen? Praise God. Today I want to talk about Jacob. Jacob was a, he's a bit of a funny character. Um, But I want to particularly look at um, Jacob's life before his ordeal with Laban. Before he goes off into stuff. Laban actually means righteousness. It actually means white, which is a type of righteousness. But it's a righteousness that's attained by works. Because the root word of that white, which is Laban, is bricks. 
which is found in the, in the book of Genesis, making bricks. Um, and it's also found in the book of Exodus where they had to make bricks without straw. So it's, it's a picture there that Jacob was going into um, South effort. But we'll see all of that. But I want to look, like I said, I want to look at the first part of Jacob's life where he's um, swindled his brother for the morsel of food and then everything, and then up to the point where he's running away, going towards um, Haran to see his um, uncle Laban. So we'll have a look at that today. We'll see that when you're in, when you're in rest, God's flavor, th- oh, flavor. God's favor flows to you. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When you're at rest, grace is always flowing to you. Amen, brothers and sisters. So we'll see that. You know, even though he's, he's an ordinary man just like us, does outlandish things, but the difference is that he's been blessed because of God's goodness in the covenant that he established with Abraham. Brothers and sisters, we are in that same covenant, but we have a much better promise than Abraham. Yes, we are seeds of Abraham, but we are much more in the covenant of grace. Amen? So we'll have a look at that. And so only through you know, resting did Jacob receive God's favor and all of that. So we'll have a look at that, brothers and sisters. So just a few um, facts on Jacob. Jacob was born clutching his brother's heel. Um, Jacob also means to supplant or supplanter. We know this from um, Joseph Prince's teaching. So he swindled his brother's birthright for a morsel of food. Just a quick um, facts on what the birthright was, and we'll see what was stolen from Esau. That the birthright was given to the oldest son. So if he's the oldest son, birthright was yours. I'm the oldest son. I, I would have a birthright if I was there. But um, that was the privilege of being the oldest son. The one who receives the birthright was honored with a double share, double land, um, um, inheritance, all livestock, the slaves, whatever the father owned, he got a portion of that. Okay? And he was honored at special gatherings, you know, for religious and social events. So you can imagine when, when we have the Gospel of Luke and it talks about the, the prodigal son and his older brothers in the field and the older brothers wondering, why is there music? Why is there festivities? Why am, not, why am I not at the head of the table at this gathering that's happening there? I'm the oldest son. Why, why am I not even invited? You know, but that's what happens when you're in the law. You're always looking to self, trying to promote self. But when you're in grace, you just re- 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 rejoice and just receive all the goodness that the Father has given you. Brothers and sisters, amen? So, again, Jacob was born clutching, amen, yes. So that's chapter 25. He's stolen, well, not stolen, he swindled his brother for more of a morsel of food. Esau, being a hunter, being a picture of self-effort, being someone that's always searching for um, something, searching for something great, searching for the next hype um, place, out there hunting, self-effort. Amen? He's come home weary, and he's seen his brother's food. And so, without even a notion, he goes to his brother, Jacob, give me some of your food. And Jacob, quite smiley, says, I'll swap you your birthright for it. If he was conscious of the grace of God, the covenant that he was under with Ab- by his grandfather Abraham and his father Isaac, reaffirmed by um, at, at Beersheba, which is the covenant which was given to Abraham, if he was conscious of that, he wouldn't be trying to swindle someone else's blessing. We can be like that in, 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 as Christians. We can want this person's blessing, but not knowing that the covenant that we are under, the favor of God is so profusely flowing to you that just being conscious of it in the environment that you're in changes everything around you. The favor is so powerful, brothers and sisters, that it's a supernatural, um, there's a supernatural power there. That's why it says in Romans 1 that this gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The power, the dunamis, to change things, to come into the area that you need and change it. Intervene, bring salvation there. That's why I say the God of all grace It doesn't matter what sort of grace you need, God's grace can get there for you. Be aware that you are in that new covenant of grace. Conscious that you are a covenant child of God. Amen? You don't need to swindle any blessings. It's all yours. But we come into that rest 
when we say, yes, Lord, I believe that it's all mine. So regardless of whatever's going on, well, regardless of whatever the enemy's saying, we are standing on the ground that God's word is true. His grace has flowed to me over and beyond every need. Every need that I have that's being portrayed in front of me, actually God has already taken that into account. And that's what um, First Peter actually talks about as well, that having cast all our cares, that's the verses before that, um, First Peter 5. We, ha- actually in the Greek it says, it's in the aorist, and so in the other words, we have casted our cares on God. Why? Because he cares for us. Now that's a revelation in itself. That means that God already knows everything that's coming up. Can that be? God is God, everybody. So let's elevate our thinking to that. If God has already taken care of the, our sin problem 2,000 years ago, then he's already met every fall, every shortcoming. And so we rest in that. Amen, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. So chapter 25, he swindled his brother's um, birthright. And so we see here, Esau's, um, Jacob has been someone who's always trying to fight for the blessing from such, since, since being a child. Even being called supplanter can do things to your identity. What you are called by, God reflects what God sees, which is right. He calls you beloved. He does not call you supplanter. He doesn't call you, you know, enemy of mine. He actually calls you beloved. He calls you my best friend, actually. And when you believe that, there's a relationship going on there. You, you start talking to dad, regardless of what people think that you're crazy but you're still you're just driving you're talking to him because you're just so inundated with his love that we are in this relationship with christ amen and we don't need to swindle anything we all the blessings of god are ours are yes and amen so chapter 27 chapter 27 is quite um it's about jacob swindling the paternal blessing now from esau the happenings here is that it says that Abraham was very dim in sight. He was old in age, dim in, eye, um, dim in sight. So he called for his son Esau and he said, My son, gather your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go and hunt for me game so that you can make something for me to eat um, so that I may bless you with the final blessing. And what's happened here? Rebecca's in the other room and she hears this. And so she's like, hmm, this, this can't be. I want Jacob to be the one to get the blessing. So she devises a plan and she says, Jacob, is Esau gone? Esau's gone? Yeah, Esau's gone. Come here. Go into the backyard and fetch me two goats. Slay it. Bring it to me and I'll make you some uh, stews that you may take to your your father um, Isaac so that he may bless you with the final blessing. Jacob's like, wait. He's smooth. I'm smooth and he's hairy. I'm shorter and he's bigger. I'm sure my dad will see, and not see, but I'm sure my dad will kind of find out that that's not me. And then Rebecca goes to him, don't worry about that. Just go do it and I'll get Esau's best clothes and then I'll stick this goat skin on your, on your arms and your legs and then we'll go in and trust me that the plan will work. And it does work actually. <laughs> but it, it works to only to a certain level because Esau comes back. Now Esau's in rage because the happenings that just happened, Esau has just been stolen of his paternal blessing. The right to everything. The final blessing before the father dies. <laughs> and so Rebecca says to um. Isaac, I think it's best for Jacob to flee to Haran you know, because he's in danger. So what's happening there, brothers and sisters? The problem there, why, why, did, why did Jacob end up having to run away? Rebecca is a picture of the church. When the church listens on the, on the conversations of the Old Testament and trying to say that now you've got to live by the Old Testament, that's where the trouble comes from. When they say, when it it's eavesdropped on Esau's conversation and think that that's how Jacob needs to live. The church has eavesdropped on the Ten Commandments and say that 
we need to dress up as, tink- as Jewish people and operate by the, by the sacrifices. That's the picture of Esau, Esau's clothes actually going onto Jacob. You're being dressed up as something else. And, you're being op- and then you're operating under the sacrifices. But praise God, we, don't, the, the, we know now that the, sacri- the blood of these sacrifices could never take away your sin. But the blood and sacrifice of the one Lord Jesus has taken it for all eternity. Amen? Amen. So that's the joy that we have. So he, he fraudulently stole the paternal blessing. And as a result, Esau's enraged now. And he wants to kill Jacob. Okay? So, like I said, they made the plan. So Jacob flees to, for his life to Haran, where his uncle Laban lives. And this is where we're picking up from, brothers and sisters. Chapter 28. Jacob is now on the run. Then Jacob departed from Beersheba, and he went towards Haran. And he came to a certain place and spent the night there because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of the place and placed it under his head and lay down in that place. He had a dream. And behold, a ladder was set on earth with its top reaching to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie on I will give to, to you and your descendants. So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put under the, his head and set, up, and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called the name of this place Bethel. However, previously the name of the city had been Luz. So we see here, Jacob, after, after all of the commotion, we can see now why Genesis 28 says that he's departed for Haran. It's good to get things in context, because otherwise we do not know the, why Jacob is running, going to Haran. And like I said, chapter 27, he's running away because he's just swindled the brother's paternal blessing, and, 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 Jacob, and Esau wants to kill him. So Jacob's departed from Beersheba to Haran. Beersheba is where, Beersheba is a place of covenant. Beersheba is where um, there was a, an argument between Abraham and Abimelech, and then Abimelech has a treaty with uh, Abraham and, and, and confirms that, you no, know, I can see that God is with you just so that there's peace between my people and your people. Um, let's make a covenant. So a covenant is established here between Abimelech and Abraham. But also at that same place, that is where Abraham is told by God to go and sacrifice Isaac. So straight away, this place where Sheba is a place of covenant. This place is a place where we talk, where we see the finished work of Jesus being performed and remembering that place. So he's, but the, the, the sad thing is that he's departing from this place and he's going to Haran. Haran is where Abraham came from after he had left Ur. Okay? What do we see here? We actually see Abraham, the father of faith, his, his, his progress was from Ur to Haran, and then he comes down into Beersheba and then so on. Jacob is actually doing the reverse of what his father's doing. That's actually what, what, what takes place when we are in unrest. It's like unraveling all what the father has done. Rather than moving forward in faith, which is Abraham's the picture of, and that's what um, Isaiah talks about, that look to the father of faith, to where the rock to where you were hewn from, talking about faith, he's now going backwards because he's, he's, he's fearful now. He's in self-effort. So the, the, the actually traveling backwards of, of destination is, is in itself a revelation of what happens when we are not operating in faith. We are in fear. Amen, brothers and sisters? So he's going to Haran. And he came to a certain place and he spent the night there. So this is a brother. Here's a man who's been running, who's running for his life pretty much. Yes, you agree? He's running because of his shortcomings. He's not resting that his shortcomings have been dealt with. That is the biggest hurdle that we as Christians face. It's actually not God's part. It's actually on our part. We ourselves have a problem with believing that God has taken all my sins. What are we actually declaring when when that happens? We're actually declaring that God isn't big enough to take away anything. We're actually declaring that the finished work of Jesus was no use, brothers and sisters. But the the glory of, of, 
us being in grace is that we understand now that the covenant that we're in, God is declaring to us that he remembers our sins no more. We may in the Greek. He will never remember it. Amen. So here's a brother running away from his shortcomings, which he got himself into. And the glory of it is that God works out everything for the good of those that, for us. Amen. So our hearts always rested. So he, because of his shortcomings, which have got him into trouble with his now enraged brother Esau, who is the one who wants to kill him. And then this, so this man is in fear for his life. This man is a man who wants to get far away from his problems as possible. Who's, who's felt like that before? Been in situations, it's right there, but I just don't want to face it right now. I need to get out of here. Actually, running away from your problems is actually looking to yourself for the answers. Because when you look into self, all you see is fear, all you see is shortcomings. But if you look to God, the initiator of our covenant, the perfecter of your faith, when you look to, when you look to God, you... You, can, you won't be running away. You will stand grounded. You will stand rested knowing that the Father is, is, is fighting your battles for you. The Father is there with you all the time. Amen, brothers and sisters? I'm getting there. Hallelujah. So he's, so he's, he's, he's run. He's run. He's run from, from Bathsheba all the way to... Where, where's this place? A lot of scholars, a lot of rabbis believe that this place that he stopped, the, stopped for the night is actually Bethel. Another place of covenant. Bethel is actually about a, 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 a about half a three quarters of a day drive from Bathsheba to um, Bethel. So he's ridden all day. He just he just wants to get the hell out of there and get there. Excuse my language, but that's Australian. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. But yeah, so he's gone, man. He's gone. He's gone. He's, I'm getting out of here. You know. So he's run, and he's come to the place of Bethel. Bethel is important because, again, like I said, it's a place of covenant. Abraham was there. It says that Abraham, yes, Abraham and Lot departed here. Lot, as we know, was a lot of trouble for Abraham, so they departed at this place because Lot saw all of the goodness that was in front of him. And so he wanted to take all of that. He again, a picture of swindling blessing. He wanted to take that. But Abraham got the, the least. He got the, the dry areas. You know, the, there was hardly any grass there. But the beautiful thing that happened here at um, Bethel is that even though Lot took the best portion, Abraham, by God, was confirmed again by God that I will bless you. I will be the source of your blessing. I will make your, the, your children like the dust of the earth, numerous amongst the stars. He was confirmed again by God of the covenant that he had placed, with, uh, that he cut with Abraham. So what's happening here? Jacob now understands <laughs> that he needs to come to a place of rest, and that place of rest for him was Bethel where he remembers the covenant that was cut by his great or by his grandfather Abraham. And I'm sure Isaac would have told um, his son about this, because that's the only way they would have known. Amen? By, by word of mouth. So Abraham he erected an altar there. And so he's, he's ridden all day until the sun sets. And then it says that he took one of the stones from that place and put it on his head. Brothers and sisters, when I... When I was looking at this, I was like, Lord, what? He took the, he took the law and put it under his head. Because you know, you, 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 Bible does interpret Bible, yes? And so you look at the stone and you think it's law. But the, it wasn't sitting right in my spirit. And the Lord said, that's not what that stone is, you silly. That stone is about the altar that was erected there in, mem in memorial of the covenant that was made between me and Abraham. So what was happening here? Jacob rested on the covenant promises that was given to him by God to, to, to his, to his um, grandfather and his father. Brothers and sisters, that's what we rest on. The promises of God. The promises of God are true. And they're always there. They, they do not decrease. They do not expire. Actually, they're fresh just as the day that Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago. 
You know, so when we rest in the, when we have a consciousness of the covenant, honestly, brothers and sisters, there is a rest that arises in you. It's supernatural. Who's experienced it? I've experienced it. Regardless of the, you can have the worst situation looking at you, but when you're conscious of the covenant, man, there is nothing that the enemy can break through when you have that confidence in the covenant that you're in. It's not the covenant. It's actually the authority of the person that cut the covenant is what we're relying on, is what we're resting in, brothers and sisters. So he's placed that stone. So that stone is a picture of resting on the, on the promises of God. Amen? That's what we have in the, in the, in the covenant of grace. Things must be pretty bad if he's got a, um, you know, if he's got a rock for a pillow and the cold ground for your bed, you know, and then the, the wind for your blanket. You got nothing. You're just running, running for life. That we can get into situations like that, brothers and sisters. It may not be of our own doing. It may be of our doing. We'll find our sometimes ourselves in those situations. But our, again, our our heart is to rest in what God has for you, has won for you through Jesus Christ. Amen. So things are pretty bad for old Jacob. Then what happened? It says that it says that he lay down in that place. Brothers and sisters, we know that the 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 manifestation of of, of God's grace and I I see in a person is the amount of rest that they've come to in an area that's been bugging them for a while. That's how you know that the, the glory of God is working in that brother and sister's life. We can't look at a brother and sister and say, oh, that guy's not grace. We've got to afford the grace, too, that was afforded to you by the Lord. We do not see each other in the, in, 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 in the flesh. We see each other in the spirit. And then Hebrews 12 says that, um, you know, that since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and then we are to have our eyes focused on Jesus, who is the author and finisher and perfecter of our faith. The more we look to Jesus, the more we be- become like Jesus, amen. We become Christ-like, amen. That's right. We, the, the more we behold Christ, we are transformed from glory to glory in his, in his image, in his goodness, yes? The more, the more that happens. And so that's, that takes you to that place of rest. And when you rest, that is the best response that a believer can have to any situation is rest. Because now it's, you're, you're declaring, God, you've got this. Now it's his hand. Now it's his, it's his problem. Now it's his turn to intervene. Amen? So we, w- the response of a believer is when, when distress arises, we, we are to be found in that rest. And it says in Hebrews that we hasten into that rest. We hasten into that rest. We hasten into that being conscious of the grace covenant. Rest comes from being conscious of the grace covenant. See more of Jesus in the scriptures. That's how this rest arises. And as we know, favor flows, wow, when you are in rest. Amen? That's where the favor comes from. So we see here, Abraham, oh, sorry, Jacob is now resting on the promises of God. And so what's happened? God comes to him in a dream. God comes to him in a vision. And it says that in that vision, that he saw a ladder which was set from earth to heaven and a, and. At the top of this ladder was God. Um, it, was, it, was, it was God, the father of your, um, the father, uh, the God of your father Abraham, Isaac, and so on and so on. And then, he, and God says, "In the land on which you are lying, I will give to you and your descendants." Stop there. The favor that Jacob needed wasn't so much material thing. The favor that Jacob needed was to be reminded that he's in covenant with God. That in itself is a favor, amen? That we are constantly a, a reminded that we are in covenant with God. And so this, he had a dream, and the ladder, it said that the ladder was set from earth to heaven. It wasn't set from heaven to earth. That's a picture of the finished, Jesus, of finished work of Jesus. 
The cross was set here. The open heaven happened after the cross. That ladder is what the angels were going up and down. The angels are actually pictures of favor being dispensed to you by God. The angels are not coming down in judgment. They are coming down in favor. And they're being dispensed to you, brothers and sisters. That's the vision that um, Jacob had. Actually, Jesus declares and, and explains to Nathaniel and Philip in John chapter 1, verse 53, 51 to 53, that he is the ladder. Brothers and sisters, this ladder is a permanent ladder. Jesus Christ is your ladder. And it's set actually from where you're standing and it goes straight to heaven. So wherever you go, this ladder follows you like this. It goes this way, it goes that way. You know, if I'm sitting down, it's there with me. But be aware that the angels are ministering to you, to what the needs that you need, that God knows that you need. Every supply that the demand has, every demand that comes with, to you, be conscious that the supply is coming up and down that ladder profusely and freely for the rest of your life. Are you sure, Henry? Yes, because that's the nature of our father. He does things, he does it everlasting. And that's why Abraham called on the name of God, everlasting. It's a continuous thing. Amen? So behold, that ladder came from earth and went straight to heaven. And that's the picture of the covenant that you and I stand on now. And God is at the top of, God is at the top of this ladder declaring that he is God Almighty. So whatever thing is, whatever situation or whatever circumstance is happening on earth, always picture your father above all the problems, above all the, 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 the enemy's attacks. He is standing at the top of the ladder and he's actually declaring that he is sovereign over anything that happened here. But our heart is to align with that and say, yes, Lord, now you are right. And it's not just agreeing just to agree. It's actually agreeing with the facts that God has given us. With the finished work, we see that your faith grows. You have, it says that we who have believed have come into this rest. It's not we who believe will come into this rest. You have come into this rest. So when you believe, you came into this rest. You don't have to move. You don't have to go out. You are permanently standing in the open heaven of God. That ladder is permanently fixated to your toes, <laughs> you know? And the angels are coming up and down on it. And it's the living God that declares this. Amen? In whatever place, whatever, whatever area, brothers and sisters, sorry, whatever land you lie on, whatever um, area of need that you rest in, God will give you that. And that's a promise. God will give you the land to your descendants. God will give, in rest, in other words, you possess. Amen, brothers and sisters? When you rest, you possess the land which God has won for you. Amen, brothers and sisters? Yeah, let's give him one. Let's give him the glory. Come on. so much in this, eh? But it's always good to see Jesus in the scriptures, to see what he's doing for you. That's our joy and grace. You know, we know that in the road to Emmaus, Jesus was expounded from the, from the law and the prophets and the Old Testament. Why? So that we can, so that the people hearing it could have faith to receive all this goodness. This, that's the key, is expounding Jesus from the, from, from the scriptures. The same thing happened to the, to the eunuch who didn't understand a certain scripture in Isaiah. And they said that Philip, from that section, expounded Jesus to him. What? And the, and the eunuch saw it and was like, whoa. So the beauty we have is always just, is just hearing about Jesus' goodness towards you, is hearing about the new covenant of grace that you're in, hearing about his love towards you regardless of whatever situation is happening. That's the joy we have in this new covenant, brothers and sisters. And that's what we are always aware of and conscious of. Amen? Isn't it better being conscious of his goodness rather than what's happening on the six o'clock news? Amen? Isaiah talks about he keeps you in perfect, perfect peace. Those whose eyes are fixated on him, his righteousness, what we have. So, brothers and sisters, 
regardless of what we go through, regardless of what you go through, look, brother, I don't know what you go through. I don't know the, the highs and lows, but I do know that God is with you during those highs and lows. I have no doubt about that. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Brothers and sisters, believe that. Dad will never leave you nor forsake you. He has an open heaven for you wherever you go. And he's ministering and dispensing grace for whatever need you need. Whatever, what, any area that you need that salvation for, see God's grace being uh, flowing to that area. It's able to cover it, regardless of what we believe. Amen. So if you do, if you have suffered a little while, know that the God of all grace is supplying all the grace that you need for that area of your life. We don't need a swindle blessing. The blessing is already ours, brothers and sisters. The blessing is already yours. Actually, we were blessed because Christ first became wisdom for us and righteousness and all of that came up. And now we're living in this new covenant of grace. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you guys were blessed today. Seeing our Lord Jesus coming to you, being conscious of his covenant. Let's give him a hand. Being conscious of his covenant, loving you all the time and in every area of life. Let's, let's, let's have our heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, thank you, Father, that your grace is always dispensing, always just flowing to us. This week, Lord, I pray that your um, favor is super bounding to them, which is always, but they are co- we are conscious of it, Lord. We, we see more and more. And the more we see your grace, Lord, the more you see that as faith. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you're, um, we have an open heaven wherever we go. And being conscious of that, Lord, changes our environment. Being conscious of that, seeing your goodness flow into that area is our joy. Lord, we don't have enough words to thank you. But we just have an attitude of gratitude towards you because of your goodness towards us. Father, we thank you. Bless everyone here as we go home. Bless those who could not make it, Lord. Father, we know that your grace is super bounding to all because of your love for us. Thank you that you first loved us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand.